Hi there, and thank you for taking the time to view our digital marketing blueprint presentation, which was originally performed at BSA VA 2018. My name's Hams Malik. I am the digital marketing manager for Vet Times and Vet Times Jobs. And this presentation is going to offer you five actionable tips on how to supercharge your online presence, for your practice or business. Before we begin, uh, this isn't a presentation for the technically savvy. It doesn't use words like ideation or disruption or innovation. These are just five tips that will help you improve how many people come to your practice and help you fulfill your marketing goals. Because I think there's a lot of stuff out there in the digital marketing world nowadays that is fluff. Uh, this presentation will not include any of that. So three things setting the scene in veterinary digital marketing. Um, firstly, you've got brand building. So that's essentially fostering trust with your customers. Secondly, you want new patients to your practice, right? I mean, that's at the end of the day, you want more people bringing their pets to you for a very long time. So that's essentially practice visits. And thirdly, uh, you want repeat visits. So you want a healthy return rate of people. You don't want to just be one hit wonders where you have an offer and they come and then they go to someone else down the road. You want people to come back uh, for the entire duration of their pets' lives. So here's commonly heard in the practice. Um, I've spoken to some veterinary professionals and I hear these a lot in different forms. Um, so it sounds exciting, but I have no time to sit on Facebook all day. Point taken, you guys are veteran professionals. You're not digital marketers and I respect that. So this presentation takes that into account. This doesn't mean you have to sit for hours on Facebook. It's just small little tips that you can do to improve your presence. Secondly, the cost is kind of prohibitive. All of this stuff in this presentation is either very, very low cost, I'm talking like 20 or 30 pounds low cost, or completely free. Um, because I don't think that digital marketing should have a barrier to entry, especially when it comes to money. Uh, thirdly, we see corporates using digital marketing and they kind of like hoover up all the talent. Um, that again, isn't uh, true. Uh, we can do things to outmaneuver your competitors online, especially using Google search as well. And I will be discussing this as well. Uh, and lastly, um, we're not um, digital marketers, we're better than professionals. And again, I respect that uh, you guys got into the profession because you want to help pets feel better. You want to heal animals. Um, if you're an industry, you got in because you have passion for your pharmaceutical company or um, the industry that you've chosen to work in. So no one specifically may be a digital marketer here, but these tips aren't for digital marketers. They're for people who just want to improve their business and their practice. A great digital marketing strategy is something that you owe to yourself as a veterinary professional because again, if you're in the industry, you're a vet uh, or a vet nurse and you're there to help animals, these five tips will help you help more animals because more people will be coming to your practice. And um, from what I've heard and from the people I've spoken to in the field, um, that's what makes them fulfilled, you know, helping more animals and improving their quality of life. Before we get into these five tips, what action do you want to happen? Always hold this uh, accountable to yourself. So if you're doing anything on Facebook or Google or um, you know, uh, Cura or, or different search engines, focus on the action you want to happen and always um, directly correlate the stuff that you've done with the action. So if you've done this massive Facebook campaign and it's reached thousands of people, fantastic, but did it fulfill the core objective? And if it didn't, you need to readjust it. So always hold yourself accountable to that. Before we begin, there's a little bit of tweaking that's needed on your website before we begin. Something called Google Tag Manager, and it is completely free, um, and essentially it's a few lines of code that you add to your website. And the benefit of this is that, firstly, um, you won't need a coder, like moving forwards in any of this presentation. You don't need a developer to come in and tweak your website. Um, and secondly, um, it speeds up your website as well, because essentially it takes all the stuff that might be loading in the background and it puts it into one container. Um, setting this up takes about five minutes if you've got access to your website. You might need some help setting this up. If you need help, then we have a blog post about this as well. I'm happy to direct you to it. But once this is set up, everything else is in this presentation, you can implement within about four to five minutes, which is a lot easier. So firstly, your website. Um, a lot of people say it's just for convenience. It's not, it's really an asset. So your website should be generating new customers on a daily basis. And a lot of people think, my God, you know, my website's just there in case people want to know my phone number. And that's not a bad thing, except a lot of people are visiting your website and leaving. Now, they're potential customers that could go to your competitors. So your website has to be primed for people to share their details or get in touch with you straight away with no friction whatsoever. Um, it should be used to generate new leads as well. So you should have places on your website where people can get in touch 
uh, a low commitment thing as well. So get in touch for you know a free ebook or join our email newsletter. That's where you get the information and then you build that trust because you know it's like someone coming to you in the street and uh, asking you know what what your favorite uh, food is at a restaurant. You, you don't know this person. You don't really want to share that information, but obviously you would tell your friend straight away because they've known you and they've built up that trust. So it's about building trust, and I'll talk about this in a second as well. Um, and lastly, on this slide, the user experience is everything. So. Even if a website doesn't load quick enough, firstly, Google's going to penalize you, so you won't appear on the search results for all your customers who may be searching for you. Uh, and secondly, users hate it as well. We never stay on a website that takes more than a few seconds to load on mobile. So there are ways to boost your page speed as well. And if you need help with that, just drop me an email and I've written a blog post I can share with you. Three things on your website that you can do to improve your conversion rate. Firstly, install live chat. Um, this seems really simple, but all the websites that I've installed this on have done amazingly well. Um, there's a platform called Drift. You can see that in the bottom left there. And this is essentially free live chat for your website that takes about five minutes to set up. Now, what this does is when people come to your website and you know, they've usually got to look around and find something, this essentially shortcuts that approach and people can talk to another person because digital marketing is great, but people will always want to talk to other people uh, and humanize their experience. Now, I know a lot of you might be thinking, I don't have the time to sit on live chat all day. Um, and you know, my, my receptionist, my PA, they're busy as well. Um, well, the great thing about Drift Chat is you can have messages that automatically appear asking for people's email address saying, we're not here right now, but we will get back in touch with you. Uh, and then at the end of the day or at lunch or something, you can pop into Drift Chat, check your notifications and get back in touch with the people who shared their data with you. Um, this is all, uh, this is something that has been used for many websites all over the world. And the ones that I've used it for uh, have seen an uplift in people talking to them. Uh, Cause that's at the end of the day, what you want. You want people to actually talk to you on a personal level and say, hi, you know, like my, my dog's got this itch and I need to bring it in straight away. When can I see you? Brilliant for emergency um, patients as well. Now I would add a little sub message in Drift chat, chat saying, this is not a consultancy service. Like, cause a lot of people will ask for like advice in Drift chat. Um, you want an automated message to come up saying, you know, this isn't a free consultation service. This is just to get in touch with us to see what we offer. Um, and I'm sure you will be communicating with more customers on a daily basis. Secondly is type form. So a lot of the time, and this is a small thing, the contact form on people's websites, it lets them down. Uh, you know, they're tiny and they're not mobile friendly and you've got to pinch to zoom and put in your details on your mobile. Remember, over half of traffic is mobile now and you need a contact form that matches that. So I would recommend type form. It's completely free and it's essentially a contact form built for mobile. It loads very, very fast, it's smooth, brilliant user experience, and it actually asks people their name as well. So it actually talks, talks to them um, by their first name. Uh, so again, free to implement, takes a few minutes once you've signed up to the platform, and it is way better than any old sort of, you know, contact form that you have to zoom in on and it takes time to populate. It's just a lot more friendly and I'd recommend it. Uh, and thirdly, reviews. Please, please use social proof. And I will talk about this later in a second, but have social proof above the fold when people load your website. So for example, I go into a website, above the fold is what I see when um, I don't scroll. So it's just basically the first impression have your star rating right there because two things work really well in digital marketing a scarcity so get it right now it's going going gone and secondly social proof so 583 people recommended this practice and gave it five stars that's massively powerful as a marketing tool and it's not something that larger practices or larger corporates can buy because it's actually word of mouth from the public and people always trust other people over brands and marketing so if you can collect your reviews then that would be brilliant um, and again, it doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to run a massive email campaign. You can just ask your customers and one by one, just build up your profile. Um, so live chat, a bit more on this than a bit more on reviews. It's a brilliant way to show that you're open for business. Um, signing up takes a few seconds to drift chat. We use it on vet times jobs and we get a couple of sales from it every single week, sometimes more. Um, last week, we had someone from New Zealand contact us. It was 10 p.m. here, but they contacted us on live chat. And they said, I'm not sure if I should be signing up, uh, posting a job because I, you know, I'm a bit uncertain. And I managed to reply because I, I was just on my computer in the evening. Um, and I replied and said, no, no, you know, we've got these um, case studies here and these testimonials, have a look. And this person is now a customer with us. So it does work. Uh, it just takes commitment and it just initial setting up, you know, that just get past that 
and you'll be able to talk to customers on a very, very personal level. Um, and if you don't talk to them right there and then, you can get their phone number or email address and then you can get back in touch with them, which is like gold dust for marketing because you can build that relationship one step at a time. So reviews, a bit more on reviews. Um, brilliant way of attracting new customers. Google reviews is free. Um, now, there's ups and downs to it. So Google reviews is brilliant because most people Google stuff uh, when they're looking for it and the reviews come up right there at the top. Um, Facebook reviews um, are also free and the advantage Facebook reviews has is you don't need to log into your Google account to give one. So if you send everyone a link saying please review our practice, if it's a Google link they've got to sign into their Gmail account. Um, so that can take some time. Uh, secondly though, if you send a Facebook link, most people have Facebook on their phone anyway. So the app will open, they can leave a review right there and then. Both are brilliant channels for, for collecting social proof and I wouldn't ignore one in favour of the other but it would have a different plan and a different approach for both. Please do populate both as much as you can. Um, Google reviews are brilliant for appearing higher in the uh, maps listings that I'll talk about in a second. Facebook reviews are amazing because when people are looking for your practice they will look at your Facebook profile and they will glance at how many people have given you the thumbs up. There is a paid option as well and it's called Trustpilot. This has all the bells and whistles and they give you an account manager as well to help you out. So if you're really serious about collecting reviews at scale, I would personally recommend Trustpilot having used them before. Um, collecting reviews can be done by in-practice prompts as well. So digital marketing is brilliant uh, and obviously I'm a bit biased towards it, but you don't need to always use digital marketing to collect reviews. Uh, you can have a poster in your practice saying, we'd love if you gave us an honest review on Google or Facebook and you can incentivize it as well. You can ask people um, at obviously the right time emotionally, you know, would you mind leaving us a review? Uh, most people, when they've had a good experience, they'll be more than happy to share that experience with others. And also, if you get a negative review, which everyone gets now and again, the worst thing you can do is just ignore it. Um, talk to them, discuss the negative review with people and say, you know, we're sorry that this happened. Don't just have a canned response. Say, we're going to talk to you either offline or this is what we're going to do to fix it. More than a positive review, a lot of people enjoy seeing negative reviews and seeing whether it was resolved. Because firstly, it humanizes a company. And secondly, it shows the company cares. That the company makes mistakes, like every company, but it actually fixes the mistakes moving forward. So please don't be afraid of negative reviews. They will happen. You will get people leaving one-star reviews now and again. Um, but just handle them in the right way and they can actually turn into positive marketing material for you. Also, this is a great way to outshine your local competition. So if someone down the road has a massive practice, um, and but you've got more reviews, you know, odds are when people see the two, they don't care that this is a corporate or this is a larger practice. Uh, they'll care how many other people have said that this practice is worth taking my pet to. Because pets like family for a lot of people and it's a very emotional decision. So you need that backup from people giving social proof that, yeah, these guys are brilliant, they helped me out when I needed it. So please do collect social proof at every possible opportunity. Secondly is AdWords, Google AdWords. So um, before we get into it, here is a screenshot of a casual Google listing. So you'll see right at the top there, the rectangle that I've highlighted, uh, there are your adverts. They'll have a little badge that says ad on the uh, left hand side. And these are adverts that people have paid to appear for. So that's the ones I'm gonna be talking about. Um, further down, the second rectangle there, you've got the snack pack. Now if you appear here, you get free traffic basically. So Appearing here means that your contact details are up to date on your Google Maps listing, your website is loading quickly, you've got lots of relevant timely reviews um, and you're actually responding to these reviews as well. If you do that, and I can't make any promises because Google doesn't show how this actually works, but from what I've seen, if you do those things, you could appear in the snack pack there and that essentially means anyone searching for your services will see you front and center with your star rating and odds are that they'll click through to your website and potentially become a customer with you. Um, the third thing, the third rectangle down there is organic search, SEO. We're not going to be talking about that for now because it can be a lengthy process. We're just going to be talking about some quick wins here. So the key terms, um, impressions. So that's essentially just the number of times your ad was seen. So nothing special there. Clicks is just the number of clicks on your advert here. CTR is click through rate. So the percentage of people that clicked versus the percentage of the times your advert was seen and conversion, just the number of people who did something you deem valuable. So it's really, really simple.
paid adverts are a great way to get in front of customers searching for you specifically. You don't need a marketing team to set this up, by the way. I know a lot of people don't want to have a big uh, Google campaign running in the background because it's a headache, but you can actually use something called AdWords Express. Now, AdWords Express is a quick way to get your campaign online and it's designed for small businesses uh, that don't have the time or the, the resource to hire a, a big marketing team. This takes about five minutes to set up. It says, how much do you want to spend? What are the keywords that you want to appear for? And thirdly, um, which area do you want to appear for? So you can geofence your practice and say, I want my ads to show within five miles of this practice. Here's the ad that I've got. So you just put in a few lines of text there, nothing, nothing complicated there. And um, also this is the time that I want to show for. So between 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., I want my ads to show in this area and I want them to go to my website. It's really that simple. And once it's set up, Google will send you a report every week when you pop into your dashboard and it'll show you um, how your campaign's performing and what you can do to actually improve it as well. So don't spend a lot of money on this at first, you know, let it prove itself. Uh, spend like, you know, 40 or 50 pounds on it watch the clicks come to your website, um, see if there's an uplift in customers, and if there is, then you can tweak your campaign and improve it. If there's no uplift at all, then yeah, evidently we need, we need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what's going wrong there as well. For the most part though, a lot of people see increased traffic from um, AdWords Express. Thirdly, uh, your business listing. So I mentioned this briefly before. Um, so Google My Business is a brilliant way of getting in front of your customers. And this is essentially the profiles you'll see on Google Maps. So when you Google like dessert parlor Peterborough, you'll see a bunch of different places on the maps. Each pointer has a Google My Business profile attached to it. The way to claim your Google Business profile, if you haven't already, is get in touch with Google. Just Google the words Google My Business, just pop through the stages and they'll send you a postcard to your business address to prove that you actually work there. You put in the code on the postcard and you've claimed that as your Google business address. From there, you can update your opening hours, you can collect reviews as well, you can add photos of your practice. So you can have you know, a puppy play group or you can have a success story as well and add it on there because people will be looking at this if you appear on Google Maps near them. Um, when people search for, say, veterinary practice near me, um, or say defleeing for dogs near me and you appear, they will take a few minutes to check out what you're about. They'll check the photos in your Google business profile. They'll check out your website. They'll actually go onto your profile as well to see if there's any photos of any recent activity. Um, and the most unnerving thing is if it hasn't been updated at all. Um, also, quick tip, do update your opening times in line with the holidays. Google loves that. And so do people as well, right? So when it's Easter or when it's Christmas or if you're taking a week off or closing the practice for a while, please update your business profile on Google and say, you know, we're not open right now or we have restricted opening times because we're in the run up to Christmas. Google sees this as a massive positive indicator that you're serious about using their service and it will reward you as well. Also, to get into the snack pack, which is the sort of Google Maps uh, listing that I mentioned earlier, you've got to make sure your website loads quickly, that you haven't, um, you haven't uh, not updated your opening hours as well, and um, also that you've got photos on there that are recent and relevant as well. Feel free to make them a bit informal too. They don't have to be perfectly cropped, perfectly produced photos. Um, you know, don't spend the time on that. Just put up a photo from your iPhone, your Android phone, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, it's a great way to do reputation management because this is where people will be leaving you reviews as well. So please do keep an eye on it. Um, you can set up something called Google Alerts. Google Alerts is a free service that, that alerts you as soon as your practice name is mentioned on the internet. So that way, if someone's singing your praises, you can give them the thumbs up and shake their hand virtually. Or if someone's saying, you know, I don't like this practice, you can actually start that conversation straight away and get ahead of it before other people see it. Number four is social media. So it's a critical element of digital marketing and my colleague Emilia Costanzo also has a talk on this that you'll be able to find. Um, a strong presence on Facebook and Instagram uh, is vital nowadays to get local interest from your community. Um, for now, we're gonna be talking about Facebook um, because there's a lot of people on there. They have about two billion active users and it has the highest retention rate as well in terms of people coming back to the platform. Um, so here are some ways to promote yourself via Facebook. So you have organic ways. Um, this is when you don't pay for it and this is essentially a post. Um, you've got competitions, so you can run a competition to get people engaged, you can ask them to tag a friend as well. You can have updates on what's happening in your practice. These don't have to be, uh, you know, earth shattering revelations. It can just be very small. You know, it's, it's little and often really on Facebook, so don't look for, you know, don't try and go viral straight away because it's, it's not really a good strategy. Um, 
you can go live. So going live is when you have your phone right um, and you can click the live button and then you can essentially broadcast to your Facebook fans everything that's happening in your practice. And a lot of people are a bit afraid of this. They think, oh gosh, you know, like what if I say something wrong? What if I stumble over my words? Um, what if everything's not clean and tidy? Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just keep it very uh, genuine and authentic and people will actually appreciate that more than a really slickly produced video. Um, people want to see the real you and the real practice before they bring their pet in. So, you know, if you've got um, a pet, a dog that's recovering from an operation, with the owner's permission, you can film them, uh, you know, start walking again, and you can have a puppy play group as well, you know, if it's a different day. And this is essentially emotional content that helps you connect with the people on Facebook. Because remember, you're competing with some very emotional brands. You've got Buzzfeed and you've got the Lad Bible for comedy as well, but then you want your, your, com your content to insert itself right in the middle there as well. So please do keep things um, authentic. Feel free to be flawed as well, it's absolutely fine. Um, Facebook does favor video as well. So by 2020, they say about half of the platform will be video, which is really interesting. Um, the great thing about going live as well is that it saves as a video afterwards by itself. So please do have video content on your Facebook page and it doesn't have to be perfect. In terms of paid options though, you can actually spend some money on Facebook to get in front of the right people. Um, Facebook adverts, you can have a local reach with them. So you can start an advert, you say, oh, I just want to reach people within two miles of my practice. Here's the advert. The advert can be a video itself. It can just be you talking. It can be someone saying, here's an offer that you can redeem. Um, Facebook also has a great option where you can actually create a voucher, target it at people in your area. And when they tap redeem, you get their details straight away. And they both, you know, both parties agree to that. So that way they just tap, you know, yes, I'm interested. You get their details. You can call them up and say, hi, you're interested in a half price chipping for your dog. And let's get you in next week and we can get the ball rolling. And then these people can become customers for you as well. Um, or you can just send people to your website. You know, if you think your live chat's working really well or your, your website is brilliant, feel free to send people along there and then they can actually fill out a form there or call you if they need to as well. Um, and more powerfully, you can remarket to the people who visit your website. So it's this, this is something called the Facebook Pixel. It takes a few minutes to set up and essentially it's a little bit of code you put into your website and it tracks everyone who visits your website. So if you've got a, uh, a cat page for your website, the cat treatments, you can then go on Facebook and say, show this cat voucher to everyone who visited my website in the last 60 days, but specifically went onto that cat treatment page. And then they'll see the offer crop up on Facebook. It's called remarketing. Uh, or when used properly, it's an incredibly powerful tool in your arsenal and very, very cheap as well. And lastly, the fifth tip, video. Um, so this is by far the best way communicate online, it's the most emotional as well. They say a picture paints a thousand words and I agree, but a video outstrips that as well because it's as close as you can get to real life really, which is what people want online. They just want some authentic content that actually relates to them. Um, or informative videos for pet owners, you know, like how to clean your dog's ears or how to cat proof your living room, stuff like that is really, really helpful because as a pet owner myself, uh, one of the most agitating things is when I go into practice and I get my cat checked up, I get a lot of advice from my vet and she says, you know, you need to do uh, X, Y and Z and I nod my head and I leave, but then I forget everything. Um, so if you make videos, informative videos, not intended to sell on this is how you clean your cat's ears or this is how you can, um, you know, uh, put a flea repellent on your dog, then that will work really well because you're helping people and people love content that's free and that's informative. Feel free to upload this to YouTube as well and you can have a, a cat library of videos, you can have a dog library of videos as well, you can have general, as many as you like and it's all free to do as well. Um, so I would definitely recommend that. Uh, the video can be shared on social media um, and on your website as well so you can have the videos on your website and it's a great indicator that you're serious about helping other people's pets and sharing that information openly. Um, it's perfect for consumers and also if you're recruiting, I mean vet times jobs, we really encourage people to have videos of their practice, you know, meet the team, humanize the practice and we've shown that video applications or videos of your practice in job adverts get a higher application rate than just text and that is a fact that we have proven. Uh, there are apps as well, Splice and Ripple for example, that can help you edit these videos on your phone in real time and then publish them within a few minutes, so no problem. Pitfalls. So. Uh, there are a few things that can go wrong when you are executing these five tips. Uh, firstly, doing too much. So a lot of people jump on all the social media platforms and they get really excited and they're enthusiastic 
and then they don't see the results because they've diluted their attention, which is quite a shame. But then at the same time, not doing enough is also bad because, you know, if, if you throw one advert out on Facebook and it doesn't perform, a lot of people just give up and walk away. Remember, your competitors won't give up and walk away. So please do carve out at least five or 10 minutes a week to check on your Facebook advert or your Google AdWords uh, Express page to see how it's performing and how you can improve it as well. So secondly, uh, not following through. So a lot of people uh, either do well on Facebook and they just don't double down on that and they just let this window of opportunity pass them by or they don't do that well uh, and then they just don't follow through on why their advert didn't work or why people didn't click on this ad. Um, if things don't go well for you, that's absolutely fine. It happens to every single person in the world in digital marketing, but please do be persistent and uh, be tenacious as well in thinking why these things didn't work and just try a different angle as well. It does require perseverance. So please brace yourself for that if you're going to execute these five tips. And thirdly, uh, vanity metrics. Uh, digital marketing is full of vanity metrics. You know, you've got the page likes, people reached, um, likes on a post, shares. Uh, that's all great, but if it's not fulfilling your core goal, which you know you decide, then those metrics uh, aren't worth very much. So I would much prefer that you guys have a page with 21, uh, 21 likes, uh, but high engagement and 21 customers that absolutely love you then have a page with 3,000 likes and no one really cares about your content. It's all about quality likes, sustaining it over a period of time and slowly building it up um, over, over a period of time. So in summary, uh, these five tips. So firstly, you've got your website, uh, which is gonna generate more leads to your practice. Secondly, you've got AdWords, which is gonna target active customers in your area that are looking for your product or service in real time because they've actually, you know, they've just Googled it and then your ads can appear. Thirdly, your business listing. So that's reputation management and getting those reviews in there as well. Uh, and fourthly, social media. So uh, you've got continual emotional connection with your patients, with your customers, uh, and you can make sure you're putting out a lot of video content as well to make sure that you're continually uh, at the forefront of their mind. And when they think they do need to visit the vet, you're the first name that comes to their mind. And lastly, video as well. So that's just quality exposure, and that can be done on your website, or on Facebook, or on YouTube as well. Or you can use all three if you're confident. Um, so please do carry on creating video content. Even if you're a bit unsure, you can record video content. It doesn't have to be published if you're unsure. You can record it and then look at it later on and think, I don't like that, and, and delete it, and then just try again. But the worst thing to do is to do nothing. Um, so in summary, there's three things I'd recommend. Confidence. Uh, to do different things and try things that you're not quite comfortable with. It's good to be uncomfortable in this sector. Secondly, curiosity. So think, you know, why, if, if something didn't work, think why. Uh, feel free to experiment as well. Feel free to look at your competitors to see what they're doing as well. Be curious in how Facebook works as well. Uh, and lastly, courage. Um, it does take courage to do things you're not used to or things that are a bit new to you, especially when you're spending your money. Um, but have the courage to move forward and when you make a mistake, please have the courage to pick yourselves up and think, that didn't work and I'm gonna learn from that and now I'm gonna improve. Because every single time you improve, you increase the distance uh, between you and your competitor. And that's ideally what you want, to become the practice of choice for your community and have long-term customers that come back to you time and time again. And finally, if you have any questions or comments, um, please fill out the type form below and I'll personally get in touch with you to help you out with any questions you have, any concerns. And if you do want some extra digital training, I'm more than happy to come down to you and offer you the latest tips and tricks on how to get your practice noticed online. Thank you for watching this online um, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Bye.